Welcome to Simple Soy Candle Making with Lincolnwood Public Library. I'm Colleen, the Head of Information Services. In this video, we will be making two 4-ounce soy candles and using ingredients already found in your kitchen to customize our candle creations. Before we begin, let's review some important safety tips. Make sure you have oven mitts or hot pads on hand and use them throughout our entire project. Never leave wax unattended while it's melting. If the wax gets too hot, the vapors can reach a flash point that will cause a fire. Never use water to extinguish a wax fire. A wax fire should be treated the same way as an oil fire. Adding water will just make it worse. Um, so if there is a fire, you can use a fire extinguisher, you can smother it with something like a large pan lid. Um, so those are some nice things to have on hand. Let's go over the supplies you'll need for this video. If you received a simple soy candle making kit from the library, many of your supplies can be found in the plastic box you received. You'll need one third of pound of soy wax flakes. You'll need a wooden stick for stirring. If you don't have a kit, you can use a wooden popsicle stick or even a disposable chopstick. You'll need to use a double boiler. Remember, this item is the one that you need to return to the library along with the plastic bin that your supplies came in. In order to use your double boiler, you will need to supply your own saucepan. This is not included in the kit. You'll want one of about a size that you can rest the double boiler along the top of the pan and it sits comfortably. You'll need two four ounce jars. You'll need two wicks, including metal tabs at the bottom, as well as wick stickers. This is how you'll adhere your wicks to your jars. You'll also need two wick holders. They're like popsicle sticks with holes in the center. If you don't have these, you can also use something like a clothespin, and this is gonna help hold your wick in the center of the jar. The other thing you'll need that's not in any kits is some at-home scents. Um, you can look through your own spice cabinet and see what's available to scent your candles. If you want something that's more fresh and natural, you could use rosemary. I had in my cabinet thyme. Um, you can also use dried flower petals. Lilac is very nice or lavender. You can use mint if you have that available. If you want more of a warm, cozy scent, you can use something along the lines of vanilla, cloves, cinnamon, or nutmeg. For those participating in Lincolnwood Reads on Beanstack, enter the secret code NUTMEG under the Explore a Different Path activity badge to earn raffle tickets towards prizes you could win such as a candle by Novelly Yours, custom designed to smell like the Midnight Library by Matt Haig, an uplifting adventure story traveling through the books of a very unique library. Follow the link in the description below this video to sign up on Beanstack for Lincoln Wood Reads 2021 and explore other cool prizes. Don't forget to enter the secret code NUTMEG. Now, let's get started. Our first step is to prepare the candle jars. You're going to take your wick and your wick sticker and remove it from the sheet. You'll adhere your wick tab, that metal bit at the bottom, to the center of your sticker. If you have one of our candle kits, the metal tab is much smaller than the sticker. There's a lot of a exposed adhesive. That's all right, because once you pour your wax into the jar, it's going to cover that. Then you'll need to remove the paper from the bottom of the sticker and you're going to insert it into the jar and you want to center it as close to the middle as possible. I found that it helps to hold my wick about halfway down, hold the jar with my other hand, and then insert to stick. 
It's not exactly in the center, that's all right. If you're able to, you can press it down with your finger or you can use a wick holder to reach in there and firmly press it down. From there, you're gonna to wanna to prepare your candle jars for when it's time to pour the wax. It's important during candle making that the wax doesn't cool too fast. This could disrupt how it looks. So there's some things you can do to help how your candle cools. Um, first, if you have uh, cooler countertops, you know, marble granite, you can raise it. So put it up on a cutting board, up on a plate. Uh, you can move away from your windows. Uh, when we finish here, I'm gonna move it further in. You can also wrap your jars in towels. This can help keep them warm um, as they cool. The other thing you're gonna do to prepare your jars is lay your wick holder across the top. What this does is help center the wick when it comes time to pour the wax. You insert your wick through the hole on the popsicle stick and then just rest it on top. After you pour your wax, you'll be able to help center it um, so that it stays in place. I'm going to use my extra towels to wrap them once the wax is poured. The next step is to prepare your double boiler by adding water to your saucepan. You're going to want to add about one to two inches of water but not enough water that it reaches the bottom of your double boiler insert. You don't want the water to touch the bottom. With the double boiler removed, Go ahead and place your saucepan on your stove top for preheating. Uh, you, you're going to want to bring that water up to a boil. So while that's getting ready, you can take your double boiler and your soy wax. If you received it through our kit, it's already pre-measured, and you can go ahead and pour that right into the double boiler. Now, it's just time to wait for the water to reach a boil, and once it does, we can begin melting the wax. Once your water reaches a boil, you can place your double boiler on top of your saucepan. The hooked end will rest over one side, and the long handle will hang, uh, sit on the other. Now that your water's at a boil, you can actually lower the heat down to a simmer, and it'll maintain its temperature. Make sure you watch your water throughout this process so that it doesn't begin to run dry. Um, if you need to, you can top off your water a little bit. But what's gonna happen now is the steam rising from the boiling water is gonna begin to melt our wax. Um, so we're gonna observe as that process occurs. We'll use our stirring rod to stir as necessary. Make sure throughout this entire process that you watch your wax. A few things to consider while your wax is melting. If your double boiler is moving around, you can use a pot holder and hold the handle to hold it in place while you stir. Another thing to note is that the wax closest to the metal is going to be melting the fastest. That's what's hottest. So you can stir your wax around to move the stuff off the sides and get the stuff from the middle uh, more exposed. Make sure that while you stir, you keep the wax within the double boiler. As long as you still see steam rising, your double boiler is doing its job.
Now I'm using an electric stove and I turned it down a bit too much and lost my simmer. So I'm going to increase the temperature a little bit. If you notice the same thing happening where you don't have a light royal, a light similar to your water, you can turn the heat up a little bit if you need to. Or if you're noticing really big bubbles, if it's really boiling hard, you can go ahead and lower the heat. Now my water is starting to run a little low, so I'm going to top it off before it gets too low. Because I've added that little bit of water, I'm also going to turn my temperature up again. If you add water, make sure you don't add too much at one time that it takes too long for your temperature to build back up. You want to add it in small amounts at a time. Make sure to stir your wax throughout the process. As you can see here, the white, still opaque wax is the stuff that still needs to be melted, where the transparent clear liquid is our hot wax. We want to continue to stir those to get everything evenly melted. The heat from the melted wax is going to help melt those pieces um, that are still solid. At this point, the steam coming off is going to be very hot, so make sure to keep your hand out of the steam. As you can see, as more and more of the wax becomes melted, our mixture becomes clearer and clearer until we can see through to the bottom. Make sure you get all those little pieces of wax. We want everything melted fully. If there are bigger pieces, you can use your stir to kind of break them up smaller so they melt. But our goal is a completely transparent wax mixture. As your wax is melted and becomes transparent throughout, we can measure out our spices for scenting the wax. We aren't going to add that while it's still on the stove, but we want to have them ready to add for when we remove the wax. I've decided to go with nutmeg, cinnamon, and vanilla for my scents. For eight ounces of wax, which is what we're working with, two four ounce candles, you can add about three to four teaspoons of spices to scent that amount of wax. Don't forget to continue stirring throughout. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go for an even blend and I'm going to be prepared to add one teaspoon of each ingredient. So I have my teaspoon out. I 
I have my candle jars ready. They have their wick holders. And I also have a towel, a trivet, or have a hot pad prepared. Your double boiler is going to be hot when you remove it. You can go ahead and turn off the heat, pick up your double boiler, remove it from the saucepan so it's not over the water, continue to stir. Place it down on your hot pad, on a trivet, whatever you've decided to use, and now go ahead and add your spices. I'm going to start with one teaspoon of nutmeg, doesn't need to be exact. I'm going to add one teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to stir all of that together. Mm. Reminds me of pancakes. Make sure you get all of your seasonings stirred in there. This is your time to get consistency. Once it's poured in the jars, it will settle. Um, this is going to happen no matter how well you stir it. Um, but the better you stir it now, you can minimize the settling um, so that it's not too much. Once your spices are stirred in, mmm, I like how that smells, you can go ahead and pour them into your jars. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my wick holder um, to actually push the wick out of the way so I have a bigger spout for pouring. Um, I'll hold it up so you can see. I'm going to hold my wick to the side. Once I pour the wax, I can move it back to the center. But for now, I'm going to slide it to the side. I'm right hand dominant, so I'm going to pour with my dominant hand for better control. Holding the wick out of the way using the wick holder. And I'm just pouring it into the jar. It's my first candle. I'll do the same thing with the second one. I'm going to use the wick holder to slide it out of the way and fill up my jar. Mm, I have a little bit left. I'm going to even them out a little. And there's a lot of sediment at the bottom. You can choose to not pour this into the candles if you don't want it to settle at the bottom of your candles. Personally, I think this sediment continues to hold a lot of the scent. And even though it sits at the bottom, can really still help your candles smell nice. So I'm going to pour it all in there. Then I'm going to take those wick holders and I'm going to slide them back to the center. Because when I go to burn my candle, I want that wick as close to the center as possible. So you can take your candles. Remember, you want to try to keep them warmer as they're cooling. So now I'm going to take my towel and I'm just going to kind of give them a little bit of extra. Oh, I think I need to fold it a few more times. There we go. And then this initial phase here, um, you know, kind of like your first few minutes, you're okay with these moving around. So I nudged mine, I'm gonna recenter them. The other thing you can do right now is take your double boiler and to clean it, you can just take a paper towel and start wiping out that little bit of extra wax. If it cools down too much, you can set it back on the double boiler, not at a full boil, um, but that'll just help uh, kind of melt the wax a little bit and you can wipe it out. So as you see, it kind of comes off on the paper towel. Um, I'm going to need to melt this a little bit more, but that's just what I'll do to clean it, is I'll wipe that wax out with a paper towel. You'll leave your candles to sit overnight, but thanks to the magic of film, I have finished one here.
And you'll see it's going to look cool to a lighter color than how the wax initially poured. That's normal. Mm, it smells good. Don't forget to return your double boiler and the plastic bin it came in to Lincolnwood Library. Thank you for joining us for simple soy candle making. If you would like to see more candle videos or advanced candle making classes, check out Creative Bug. Thousands of arts and craft video classes are available to you all for free with your Lincolnwood Library card. Follow the link in the description below this video to start accessing classes now. Thank you for joining us. Bye.